shit all away. I want to see it go right in. And down. <laughs> This happened to me many years ago when I was working as an airline stewardess. I was on a transit stop in Dubai, en route to Europe. The aircraft, a B747, had arrived earlier from Singapore and my crew took over in Dubai. I was working behind with my girlfriend in the economy AFT cabin. As usual, during transit stops, we crew would be busy doing ground duties preparing the aircraft for the next sector. One of our duties was to check and replenish the aircraft toilets with amenities. As I was doing that, the doors of one of the toilets shook. It was the kind that had folding doors. I ignored it and told myself that it could possibly be the effect of the cargo loading downstairs. Later on, a passenger came to me and told me that there was probably another passenger trying to get out because According to him, the door shook very hard. You see, this type of door folded inwards it would be difficult if you were inside trying to get out, if you were a big size. I immediately went to check on it. As I was coming towards it, it shook again. I pushed it open, and to my surprise, there wasn't anyone inside the toilet. Huh, what could that be? I locked it from outside after that. I went to my girlfriend and told her about it. She said she saw it too but ignored it because she saw no one going into the toilet. Throughout the flight, the toilet remained locked because we were too scared to go near it. So beware of aircraft toilets the next time you fly. My name's Larry, and what I'm going to tell you happened two months ago. We were at camp. Everyone was spreading these stupid rumours around, saying there was a ghost in the toilet. I wasn't much of a believer myself, I mean, come on, a ghost in the toilet. It's got to be the funniest thing I've ever heard. Well... That's what I thought, until I actually found out they were not just making it up. It was around midnight, and everyone was asleep. We had these rules like, if you need to go use the toilet, you would need to take a buddy. I really needed to go, and I thought that if I spent any longer trying to wake up a friend, to go to the toilet with me, I'd probably wet myself. So I grabbed my torch and I headed to the toilet without a buddy. It was pitch black outside and the toilet was empty, except for one that was locked up. So I thought, great, I don't have to be afraid of using the toilet with no one around. As I got in and began taking care of business, I began hearing a banging on my wall, coming from the stall next to me. I shouted out, would you please stop doing that? So eventually, it did stop. But then, I heard something horrifying. I heard someone or something trying to climb over the wall next to me. I was obviously very scared at this point and the hair beyond my neck began to stand up. Then, a minute later, I began to see black hair up the top of the wall. It felt like forever until it disappeared. I quickly finished up and ran out of the bathroom, screaming, waking up everyone all through the camp. 
Everyone tried calming me down, but of course, I eventually did and told them what exactly happened. That's when all the camp workers went very quiet. Then one of them said, We should have warned you about all this. Four years ago, a girl died in that exact same stall. The one that's always locked up. Then, five days later, people smelled something bad in that toilet, but they thought nothing of it. Until somebody looked underneath, and they screamed, finding the body laying there still. I am very glad that I left that camp the next day. That story the man told me still sticks with me to this day. A little background. I was around 12 years old when this happened, and it was the first time I went camping. There's some information I need to tell you about our camping location. The first thing you see when you enter the campsite is a building where we eat and have some toilets that I was anxious to use. Our tents were down the grass field. Next to this building was the house of the owner that owned the camping site. They also had a swimming pool, which is important later for the story. It was the first time I went camping with my local scouting group. We were going to camp for around 10 days. Me being the very shy and anxious kid, I decided to just hold in my poop. The first couple of days were pretty easy. I ate a lot because I really didn't want to poop since I didn't want anyone to hear me, but something went terribly wrong on the seventh day. That day we went swimming at the owner's swimming pool that I mentioned prior. We had a great time swimming and just having fun until suddenly I didn't feel so good. I had the urge to poop really bad, so I figured to finally use the restroom and excuse myself to the bathroom after those seven long days. I went back to the building that has restrooms, but before I could go and enter that building, there was a wooden type door that had a weird locking mechanism that I couldn't open. At this point, I was just about to burst my pants. I really couldn't hold myself any longer and pooped in my swimming shorts. Luckily enough, my poop was hard since I'd held it in for quite a while and it didn't drip or anything. So me being the smart kid I was, I wrapped my towel around my waist, not to make myself look suspicious. But then comes the problem. I couldn't manage to open the door. Fortunately for me, a staff member saw me struggling and opened the door for me. I then casually walked to the restroom to clean myself up and went back to the tents to change my clothes before the rest of the group came. I just changed my clothes in time before the rest of the group arrived and no one knew of my deed. After this, I decided to hold in my poop for the remaining three days with success. So if any of you are going camping that do have restrooms, please, for the love of God, if you're anxious like me, just go a night when everyone is asleep. So this happened in ninth grade. After school, me and my friends would usually take the tram to get home. On this particular day, it was only me and one of my good friends. Usually we'd get off in the city center to connect with another bus. But on this day, for some reason, we chose to take it to the end stop. We were tired and sleepy from school, I guess. And so we did. But this had now added an hour or so from our already long day. So we were rather keen on getting back home. Though me and my small bladder needed to use the toilet pretty urgently. Luckily, my friend knew that there was an old metro slash train station just beneath where we had gotten off. This station had a medium sized red building that served as a waiting area, I suppose. It was cloudy outside and inside this building slash house, the lights were off. Not a single soul to be seen, some ironic foreshadowing. 
The lighting inside the toilet was fluorescent as well. All this really set an eerie ambience. I go to do my business, but in the midst of that, I hear my friend just completely break down. She screams at me to hurry and come out. I laughed it off thinking she was just being dramatic or pranking me, which wouldn't be crazy and plausible in my defense. But I do eventually come back out and she hits me with, I just saw a ghost. I'm just stood there thinking, what has gotten into this girl? She's delusional. But she stood her ground and guided me to a mirror that was attached to a door and told me to just stand there and wait. Not even three seconds later, this ghost, who was clearly an elderly man, comes obliquely from behind and just floated forward straight through the door. He was in a train driver uniform as well, very on brand for the location. It all happened very quickly, and so at that point, I'm just screaming my lungs out and we sprint for the exit. It was very intense, and a very interesting set of events to leave it at that. I've never been opposed to ghosts existing, on the contrary actually, but I've also found it hard to believe that they present themselves so similar to real humans. Now, I know at least. I work at a kindergarten as a teacher, and I want to share a creepy experience I had at work. At work, there's another building separate from the school that we use as a kind of warehouse. It's a really old building. A long time ago, it used to be the teacher's dormitories. There's a bathroom, a toilet, a large room, probably a dining room, and a number of single bedrooms up on the floor above. It's a wooden building, and when you walk around in there, you can really hear every step. It creaks and is clearly worn out. It feels like a really old-fashioned department. I have to say, it's pretty creepy in there, especially when you're on your own. No one wants to go in there, to be honest, and there are a lot of stories about it. Unexplainable goings-on and sightings. For example, there is a room with a window. No matter how many times you close it, that window, the next day, is always open. There should be no one on the second floor, but people have heard sounds coming from up there. Like the sound of running on the wooden floor. It's not the sound of mice, cats, or any other small animal, they say. Also, at least once or twice a year, some of the kindergarten students ask who the man is in the building across from their playground. When the teachers look towards where the students are pointing, they can never see anyone. Sometimes the kids just outright tell you that they don't want to go anywhere near that building. We staff members choose to go there in a group when we have to. So one day we couldn't use the main school building due to some necessary repair work being carried out. So we had to use the old building. Even though it was daytime, I was creeped out by that building. I really didn't want to be there. I was relieved to hear that I would be accompanied by two other teachers. There were so many students to take care of, but later, when the sun was setting and the other two teachers had to go, I was left alone with the children there. Not all the students, I think I only had around eight left with me, and the others went back with the other teachers. One of the teachers would come back later to help me clean up there. I thought to myself, it's okay, the kids are here, just be brave for them. One of the kids asked to go to the bathroom, Usually they would go to the bathroom by themselves, but since it was a bit spooky in the old building and the sun was going down and the bathroom was a little far from the room we were using, I decided to ask all the students if they needed the bathroom and we all went together. The bathroom had one cubicle for adults, teachers, and then some smaller facilities for the children. The bathroom was really creepy. We all went in at the same time and noticed that the adult cubicle the adult cubicle door was shut. I thought, oh, this is good. The other teacher's back already. I called out and announced that we were all in the bathroom. Then from down the hall, I heard the voice of the teacher I thought was in the cubicle. It was pretty shocking. Who's in the cubicle then? I wondered. The door was locked from the inside. 
I knocked the door. Is anyone in there? I asked. I didn't get a reply. The kids weren't really paying attention, which was good. I didn't think that there would be another adult in here with us. I guessed that it could be a kid in there. It crossed my mind that a kid could be playing a prank. So I knocked the door once more. And then, in response, I got a single knock back. Ah, so there is someone in there, I said. There was no response. Who's in the teacher's cubicle then? I asked. Once again, there was no response. There must be someone in there since I had just heard them knock back. I decided to look through the gap at the bottom of the stall to see if I could see anyone's feet there. I saw nothing. No person's feet or anything. It gave me goosebumps. I decided to get the children out of there. When we went back into the main room, the other teacher noticed the look on my face and asked me immediately about what had happened. I knew that I couldn't say anything out loud because the children were listening and I didn't want to freak them out. Just in case, I counted the number of students. Maybe one was hiding in the bathroom and I just couldn't see them. I don't know, they could have been stood on the toilet or something. I needed to be sure so I counted the number of students four or five times. They were all there and accounted for in the room with me. So who was in the cubicle? I needed to speak to the other teacher. I walked over and calmly whispered to him about the situation. We let the children play together for a while while we spoke about what to do next. Could there be someone else in the building with us? Or could it be my imagination? We needed to find out because if there was someone here then it would be a criminal matter and we have a duty of care to the children. If there was someone here and they were hiding, I don't really want to guess at what their intentions were. So us teachers went to the bathroom as stealthily as we could to see if we could catch someone unaware. When we arrived in the bathroom, I instantly noticed that the cubicle door was now open when it once was shut. It must have taken no more than a couple of minutes for me to go and return to the bathroom from the first time. All this must have happened in the space of minutes. No one left that bathroom. The only exit to the bathroom leads down the hall to the room we were all in, and to get to the only exit to the entire floor, you would need to pass the room that we were in. We would have noticed somebody leaving. I know, but if there was someone in that building, then I would have noticed them leaving. I have no idea what the hell that was that day, but it seems otherworldly to me, especially if you consider the fact that some children say that they have seen someone in the windows there. I don't like going anywhere near that building these days. After six years of running, it finally happened. Most early morning runs I do start off like this. Wake up at 5am, think strongly for five minutes why staying in bed is the better option and make myself the strongest coffee I can handle, read the news for half an hour, and take a poo. Once this routine is done, I'll stick my running gear on and run anywhere between 5 to 15k. I'm a fairly okay runner. Over the Christmas period and up until today, I just simply haven't had the time to run. 18 hour days, kids, wife, etc, etc. I'm sitting on the sofa just shy of midnight, dead tired but also craving a curry. I go to the fridge, and bingo. Thai red curry ready meal. Amazing. I popped it into the microwave for 3 minutes and sat back on the sofa with my glass of wine. At 1.30am I awake, slumped up on the sofa, and glance at my clock, and my first horrifying thought is that I've just wasted £3.40 on a ready meal. I'm still hungry though. So I go back into the kitchen, microwave on for another 3 minutes, another glass of wine, and I enjoy my inappropriately timed dinner. At 5am my alarm goes off, and to my amazement I'm wide awake. My first thought is to get my running gear on, and so out come the shorts and hoodie. 
I make my way downstairs and neck a litre of water, forgetting all about my coffee, probably because I already feel wide awake. I read the news for about five minutes, grab my keys, lock the door, and press start on my night app. It's going well. I'm plodding along at just over four minutes a kilometer and enjoying being the only person brave enough to be out in two degree weather or 35.6 Fahrenheit. My legs are feeling good and I'm planning the day ahead and having a lovely conversation with myself. Not wanting to overdo it, I decided at 4k to start heading back. It's now about a three kilometer stretch of straight road with a 24 hour grocery store, Tesco, 1.5 kilometers from my house. I always up the pace as it's slightly downhill and I like to take advantage of looking better than I actually am. I was increasing in speed. I was flying super happy and nothing was gonna stop me until I'm a hundred yards from the little grocery store and having to slow right down to catch my breath. I've obviously lost a bit of fitness over the past month of not running. No worries, I thought. A couple of minutes of walking and then I'll jog the rest of the way home. Then came the need to take a poo. It seemed more urgent than other times I've needed to go after a run. Do I stop in Tesco? No. I better go home. Nothing worse than pooping in a public toilet. So I began to jog, not really thinking about the readiness of my anus. I'm about halfway between my house and Tesco. 700 meters till I'm home. My cautionary jog was suddenly halted abruptly like I'd ran straight into a wall. I was ready to explode. Holy crap, I say out loud. The sheer need for me to go has gone from a three out of 10 to a nine out of 10. Now I've been at a nine out of 10 a few times in my life. So although desperate, I composed myself and focused on getting home. I started to run quickly, very quickly, 200 meters down and bang the brick wall. I've gone from a nine out of 10 to an, if I don't get home in 20 seconds, I'm finding a bush. I can't go in a bush not in a respectable area. I'll be arrested and thrown in jail for the rest of my life. I'm half a kilometer from my house. I'm 27, fit, healthy, and I am making it home. I start sprinting. I'm breaking records. I'm confident Usain Bolt would have not kept up with me right now. The road just disappeared beneath my feet. A couple of turns and I get to my road with my keys in my hand. I'm 50 meters from my door and I can't sprint anymore. I walk. My anus at this point feels like the exit of a concrete mixer, holding back the entire weight of the world. I'm 10 meters from my door, practically in tears. My butt is clenched so tight, I thought I was going to snap my spine. Oh no. It was then my body and mind just gave up in one swift motion. I was reminded about what it would be like to be a baby again. I just full on let it go. This was not a clean sausage. No. This was full on bad stomach. In a panic, I dived between the wife's car and the side of the house. I'm praying at this point that I'm dreaming. Realizing that I'm not, I'm praying no neighbor is watching. How has my life come to this? Do I strip off here and walk around the side of the house naked? Do I hop the garden wall and hide my ruined everything in a bush? No, no. There's not an easy way out. I just have to go inside and clean up. I check my legs. There's no evidence. My tight fitting boxes have done a splendid job of holding the unwanted contents. I walk around the house and let myself in. To my horror, both kids and the wife are up way too early. I think it was roughly 6 a.m. and she's doing her makeup and getting ready to take them to school. Babe, I've had an accident. In a panic, she runs down the stairs and I explain how I defecated myself. 
She basically didn't believe me, and in her grumpy morning ways, she went back upstairs. I waddled upstairs to the bathroom, and without thinking, just jump straight into the shower and drop everything. Holy mother. I nearly collapsed from the sight and the smell. The cleanup process began. It was not going at all well. The hot, steamy shower was exponentially making the smell worse with every passing minute. So bad, in fact, the kids and wife all entered the bathroom at once and all just stared at me in complete disappointment for a brief moment before exiting and bursting into fits of laughter. Daddy pooed himself, I'm telling everyone. My wife joined in with the joke while asking me exactly what happened. The realization of what occurs is now settling in. I'm stood in the shower in dark brown water with bits of crap floating around my ankles. And just as things seemingly can't get any worse, the water starts gradually rising up my legs because it's blocked the plug hole. Oh, and now I remember the estate agent is coming round at 9am to value the house. Happy running everyone. I've been wanting to share this story for years. It is easily the most visceral experience I've ever had, and it started with an innocent after work drink. When I was working in London quite some years back, I had agreed to meet an old work colleague at a pub on the Strand in London, near Waterloo Bridge. I'd never been there before, and the pub was cosy and small. I think it was called the Savoy Tup or Tap or something like that. My ex colleague, let's call him Tim, was there when I arrived and he managed to get us a small table and a couple of seats tucked into a corner of the pub besides the bar. We were a bit cramped but were thankful to be able to sit. After our first pint, Tim went to get another round. That's when I saw her. As impossible as that is, I felt that there was suddenly someone standing in the small space between me and the wall. There's no way anyone could have squeezed past without me noticing. They literally would have had to have climbed over me. I turned around and against the wall, there was a young woman, early twenties, staring down at me. I knew she was a ghost. Thing was, she wasn't see-through at all. I saw her, like I saw any other patron in the pub. She was dressed in clothing that I picked to be from the mid to late eighties, a bit goth in style, all black. She said nothing. She was just looking down at me, staring intently. I was frozen in place, just staring back at her. A few minutes passed, and I spied Tim out of the corner of my eye, beers in hand. I thought perhaps he can see her too. Tim sat, and I turned to him, wide-eyed. He put the beers down and said, what's wrong? I turned back to the wall and she was gone. I asked, did you see anything beside me? He looked at me, strange, replied, no, and I changed the subject. I hadn't known Tim that well previously, so I didn't want to act weird. Soon enough it was my shout, and as I got up I took the chance to head to the toilet. I recall, they were up a flight of stairs, and I remember. A really weird feeling in the upstairs toilet as well. I tried to shake it all off so I could enjoy the evening. Heading back to the bar, I ordered and as the bartender was pouring the beers, I hesitated but finally asked him something like, has there ever been anything weird happen in this pub? The bartender stopped pouring, looked at me and asked, did you see her upstairs did you? I looked back at him. Motioning over to where Tim and I were sitting, I said, No, she was over there where I'm sitting. She appeared up against the wall. Hmm, the bartender replied. She usually stays up in the bathrooms. That's where most people experience something. Handing the beers over, I was told the story of how a young female bartender in the late 80s had hanged herself in the upstairs toilet of that pub.
This happened last August. It's the strangest experience I've ever had. My family went away, leaving me home alone. It was fine, I didn't want to go with them, so it wasn't really an issue. They would be gone for four days and three nights, so I figured I would just enjoy having the place to myself. I should just go over the layout of the house really quickly. It's a fairly large, detached house. The standard two stories. The house has been in our family for years. I think my dad inherited or got a good deal on it from a family member. Anyways, there are bathrooms upstairs and down, and since my room is upstairs, I use the upstairs bathroom. By the way, the bathroom will feature heavily in this story. The day that this took place was a regular school day for me. Well, it was supposed to be a regular day, but I forgot that my parents had signed me up for some after-school class, and I ended up staying way later than I wanted to. I left school at about 7.30. It's not that uncommon over here to stay that late. I ended up getting home at around 8pm. I thought to myself, hey, even though it's late, I'm all by myself tonight. So I decided to take my time on the walk home. I browsed a couple of stores, and, and it was all fun and games until I felt a gurgle in my stomach. I apologize for being a little gross here, maybe painting pictures you might not want to see, but my struggle is essential to this story, trust me. Anyway, I had about a one minute window to find a toilet. I'm a guy and it wasn't like I could just go behind a tree, no, I needed the, uh, the other one. The one after the number one was what I needed. So I literally ran home, clutching my stomach and praying to all the known gods that I didn't run into one of my friends or any of the girls from my school. Luckily enough, I wasn't that far away from home, and I know you're all on the edges of your seats, but I made it inside. I burst into the downstairs toilet, and you know, all hell broke loose. Something crazy happened though, something that shocked me. You know I said that I was alone, right? Well imagine the shock my body endured when I heard someone banging on the bathroom door. It wasn't a knocking sound, it was someone hammering on the door. I felt like someone was trying to break the door down. I was so busy being frightened, I stopped what I was uh, doing. I could do little more than listen to the sounds of the door being banged on. I kind of backed my way as far back on the throne as I could. I just stared at the door in awe. I didn't really feel fear at first, I just felt shock. I don't know, maybe my experience is unique. And if I was on another kind of chair in a different room, maybe, maybe I would have felt more fear than shock. But all I felt was shock. Potentially out of embarrassment. After I guess about a minute, the banging suddenly stopped. There was a brief pause and then someone shouted some expletives in a really loud voice. I couldn't make out what they said, but the voice was undoubtedly male. One thing struck me. Something just kind of kicked in when I heard that voice. The banging then continued. Fear was in the room with me now. I just held my head in my hands and prayed internally. It wasn't a prayer to a deity, just a prayer for my safety. To be left alone. And it went something like this. Occupied. If you really need the bathroom, please, please just go upstairs. I don't know why I thought of it like that. Maybe it was a little because I had an older brother and when he wanted to take a shower and I was using the bathroom or something, he would always bang on the door to try and hurry me up. Then, as if my prayers were answered, the banging stopped and then I heard the rushing of footfall heading upstairs. I couldn't really get my head around what just happened and what was going on, so I sat there in stunned awe grasping for any kind of logical conclusion. I was very, very reluctant to leave the bathroom. After a while, a long while, I managed to calm myself down. I mean, it wasn't like I could spend the next three days in the bathroom. I decided to get out of there. I figured that as soon as I got out, I would burst out of the front door and run to my friend's house. When I got there, I was likely visibly distressed my friend was concerned for me and I told him what had happened and he managed to get his parents to allow me to stay over that night. I made sure to let them know that I was grateful. It was very short notice. I planned on tapping them up to allow me to stay for another night maybe, 
but his mum told me that they were off for a short holiday the following afternoon. That meant that I had to go home. I thanked my friend and his family again on the following morning and then reluctantly headed on home. I think my friend must have been annoyed with me as I'm pretty sure I must have kept him up half the night. I was a bit too scared to sleep, you see. I had to go home and get a change of clothes or at least a shower. And if I left the house empty and I hadn't done all the chores that I was asked to do, then I would be in a world of trouble when my parents got home. I had to go home and I hated it. The only good thing about the situation was the fact that it was about 3 p.m. when I was heading home. Natural light was good. I couldn't have done it in the dark. I entered my house slowly and carefully. I tried to be as silent as possible. The first thing that stood out to me was my school bag lying there on the hall carpet. I thought about leaving again, but I pushed on. I was debating internally over which situation would have the worst outcome, my parents being mad at me or confronting whatever was upstairs. I thought about it for a while and I began to head upstairs. The moment I put my foot on the bottom step of my stairs, my stomach began to gurgle. It was literally ten times worse than yesterday. I needed to go, and I needed to go immediately. I immediately headed for the downstairs bathroom, and I was shocked to find it locked. This simply couldn't be. I couldn't understand why it would be locked, so I started hammering on the door. I didn't know if it had somehow locked itself. I didn't care, I just needed to get in there very, very quickly. I was literally throwing my shoulder into the door in an attempt to break it down. I screamed at the door a couple of expletives, and in that moment I realized that it was all too familiar. Didn't this happen yesterday? I thought that I should go upstairs and use the bathroom, just like what happened yesterday. So, was I the one who was knocking on the bathroom door? What? Was this some kind of glitch in the matrix? I mean, I've heard of stuff like that before, but they just seem to happen in less intimate settings, you know? The next question I had about two seconds to answer before all hell broke loose was, do I really want to go upstairs? Is my future self up there? What was up there? Whatever was happening was putting stress on my body every time it happened, so would it be worth my while going upstairs to confront it? No way. I don't want to. I decided to suffer the embarrassment of heading over to the neighbor's house and asking them if I could use the bathroom. They asked some questions, but I think the sheer horror on my face convinced them that I needed to go instantly. Permission granted, and then, well, you probably don't want to know. Toilet flushed, just like my expression. I left the neighbor's house. That night, I stayed out until the early morning at an all-night restaurant. In the morning, when I got home, I just sat on the curb in front of my house. I just waited like a dog for my parents to come home. And when they got home, I told them everything. And they didn't seem that interested in my claims. They seemed tired and irritable, and I was all like, Hello, how do you think I feel? Well, sadly, this is where the experience ends. Nothing like that happened again in our family home. Well, that's as far as I know. Would anybody want to admit all the gross bathroom stuff that I've just admitted? Not sure. It scared the hell out of me. I didn't want it to ever happen again, and that's why I'm posting it here. To A, get it off my chest, not like I can tell anybody I know this, and B, see if anyone out there has experienced anything similar. A glitch in the matrix? Missing time? These concepts become more frightening to me the more I look into them. Last Thursday, I went to watch a horror movie with my friends. It was a midnight show, and the title of the show was 303. The show was already starting when we came in, we were late for about 10 minutes, and the story was about a college where there have been a murder in the school. There's five junior college boys, and after knowing that somebody has been killed, we felt so scared. It was such a thrilling show. We had shivers down our spine, and this show lasted for two and a half hours. It ended at about 2.35 a.m. After the show ended, we decided to go to the toilet. It was quite dark at that moment, so the only persons left in the toilet was me and my friend. 
But then, we started to hear something weird. We heard a lady laughing and crying all at the same time. We hugged each other. We tried to open the door, but it was locked. We tried shouting for help. And while we were there, we constantly heard the voice. About five minutes later, the voice suddenly stopped and the door opened. We dashed out from the toilet and we are so lucky that nothing terrible happened. Do you ever have an overwhelming feeling that someone is looking over the partition in the cubicle while you're inside the toilet doing your business? Do you have this fear of hearing toilet flushing when you know no one is in it except yourself? Let me relate to you an incident which will deter you from using public toilets unless you really have to. I used to work in a remarkable building located in Shenton Way and it was on a Saturday when the incident happened. I was supposed to arrive at the office around 8 a.m. as I needed to get some things done urgently. The normal starting time was 9 a.m. and since it was a Saturday, only a handful of people were expected to be in. It was then that I had this tremendous stomach ache after alighting from the MRT and had to rush off to the toilet in the station. I quickly pushed the door open and scrambled into the first cubicle and went about doing my business. I did not pay attention to if there were anyone else in the other cubicles, but it was empty on the outside when I went in the restroom. Halfway into my business, I heard a flushing sound coming from a couple of cubicles away. I expected further sounds to come, like tearing of toilet paper, etc. But there were none. I wasn't bothered, so I continued on finishing my business when another flashing sound came. Curious now, I poked my ears up for other noises, but none came. Just then, I could sense someone peeping from above, and I quickly looked up, expecting to see some pervert. There was no one in sight. I could feel the tingling feeling creep up my neck, and I urged my shit to quicken. The overwhelming sense of being watched from above shrouded me, and I kept darting my eyes up and at the gap under the door. Then I heard the sound of the tap being pressed and water running in the basin. However, I did not hear any footsteps approaching the wash area, nor did I hear anyone coming in. No sound of door opening inside or out, and I'm in the first cubicle to get to the wash area. Other users in the cubicles have to pass me, and I can definitely see their shadows from the gap under the door. My imagination began to run in overdrive, and I pulled back whatever was supposed to come out and quickly finished my business. Braving myself, I checked every cubicle, hoping there was a pervert lurking inside, but all were empty. My heart was literally thumping against my chest. I held my breath, turned towards the wash area leading to the main door. Nobody was at the wash area as well, and I walked briskly out of the damn toilet. I couldn't even stay a second longer, let alone think about washing my hands. I could literally feel the blood drain from my face as I hurried through the underpass to my office building. Nowadays, I make sure my bowels are loosened before I step out of my house just to avoid using public toilets. When I was around eight or nine years old, I went to our local Kmart with my best friend Tabitha and her adoptive parents so we could get pizza at the little Caesars that was around the corner. Now, I should tell you ahead of time that her mother and father were a bit odd, but great to us. They took us out all the time. Like many parents, they did things that were sometimes very, very embarrassing. And that day would end up being the most embarrassing but hilarious outing we'd ever been on with them. You see, my friend's mum would often carry an extra set of underwear and pants with her. Because she would randomly, and at the worst possible times, 
shout herself while we would be doing things like eating or walking around an amusement park or store, which would always end the same way. Her wobbling like a penguin to the nearest bathroom while simultaneously holding herself and yelling to my friend's dad to go out to the car and get her bag so she could finish in the bathroom and change. All the while my friend and I would disappear as quickly as possible, so we not only could pretend we didn't know them but also hide the fact that we were laughing hysterically and trying not to pee our own pants. On this day though we had finished eating and when we stood up to go look around the store her mum exclaimed, I have to poo and started running for the bathroom, clear at the other end of the store in the back, and walk farting the entire way. Except when my friend and I started following behind her at a very long distance, so we wouldn't get in trouble for being by ourselves, we turned down an aisle, and saw what I can only describe as a human sized rabbit turd on the floor, going from aisle to aisle leading straight to the bathroom. This was no small store either, and I have never been so mortified in my life. I feel so bad for whoever had cleaning duty that day. The next story. When my oldest daughter, Erin, was around eight years old, I got a phone call from my ex-husband's girlfriend, Nina at the time. When I answered, she was screaming with anger and half crying, half disgustingly trying to explain to me that she needed me to help her and my ex talk to find a fitting punishment for my daughter, which confused me because not only was this woman a complete moron, but she was making no sense and she didn't have custody of her own child. So there's no way she was going to punish my child for something just because she said so. After getting her to calm down, which took quite a while, I told her very firmly she needed to explain to me why she was so angry and tell me what Erin did to deserve punishment. And she finally spit it out. I went to the shower today and I was about to wash my hair and when I reached to wash my hair my arm knocked over this kid's hair washing cup and I looked because whatever was in it spilled all over my side and I almost puked. The cup was filled with poop, human poop to the very top and I know it was Erin, she was the only other person here. So naturally I started laughing so hard that not only did I start crying, but I could barely breathe. Nina was on the phone more furious than before, screaming all the while my mother and daughter were looking at me trying to figure out what exactly was going on. Trying to get myself together, I tell Nina that I'll talk to Erin and see why she would do something like that. And of course, I would take care of it. Erin, by the way, had come home from my exes right before the phone call, as we only lived two blocks from each other. So I hung up and tried to relay to my mom and Erin what was going on, and in between completely losing it at the thought of Nina covered in poop, and my daughter tells me, yeah mom, I thought it would be funny to poop in her haircut and set it on top of our shower at the edge of dad's, so when Nina got in the shower it would tip over and go all over her. I tell her while still laughing and crying, that it's not nice to put your poop on people, and she says, well, she was in the shower already, and you're the one laughing. I've never been so proud in my life because I can tell you Nina of all people absolutely deserved it. And my kid and I went out for ice cream. One or two months ago, my girlfriend and I went out to our favorite bar. The drive is a tad longer than an hour to our place from the bar, primarily on barren interstate after the first 15 minutes, save for a few rural exits and one rest stop a little over halfway home. My girlfriend was sober that night and was driving. I had had a bit to drink and was feeling warm and tipsy. I asked my girlfriend to make a quick stop at the rest area so I could pee. Thanks, beer. This is a normal stop for us to make if one of us has been drinking, since the rest area has its own direct exit and entrance so it's faster than taking an actual exit into a town for a gas station. The rest area has only one road in and one out, and is surrounded by trees to the point you can't see the facility from the freeway. It has wooded walking trails. By the time I hopped out of the car at the rest stop, it was sometime around 3am. 
As mentioned, this is a fairly regular stop, and until that day, the only other person I had seen in that rest stop around that time of night was the guy who maintains it. I walk in. The vending area is empty and completely silent. I make my way over to the men's room and push it open to be immediately startled by this old man, maybe mid-sixties or so, standing immediately to the left of the door inside the bathroom. He was wearing what I can only describe as an inspector gadget coat and slacks. I noticed he had a cell phone in his hand when I opened the door, but it was hanging down at his side and the screen was not lit up. He stares at me, and I stare back for a split second. Then I get over it and pass him to head over to the urinals. I take the urinal closest to the sinks when I notice he made no indication he was going to walk out because there is basically a wall of mirrors stretched out far enough that I can watch him in the mirror while I'm at the urinal. I unzip and keep my eyes on the mirror but make sure not to turn my head at all. By the time I look in the mirror, his phone is up in his hand and on as if he were texting but he seems to be staring at me rather than the phone either way he definitely was not looking at his phone a very long 60 seconds pass and i absolutely cannot piss with this silent guy staring at my back from the door then in the mirror i notice him take a small slow step forward i tell myself i'm just tipsy and imagining it to just get on with my piss and GTFO. He then takes a more obvious step forward, and I put in my pants while I speed walk to the back handicap store and lock the door. I went to the back where my feet weren't visible and texted my girlfriend about the creepy guy inside with me. I sit and wait to hear the door open, signaling him leaving, but it still doesn't. After possibly the longest eight minutes of my life, I hear the door open and close. I wait another two minutes and finally pee in the stall though. I cracked the stall door first. Luckily the bathroom isn't huge and I had almost complete visibility of the room from the stall I picked. I saw no signs of anyone else, so I walked out, washed my hands and beelined it back to the parking lot. I finally make it back to the car and ask my girlfriend what car the old guy got into. She turns to me wide-eyed and says he didn't get into one he just walked across the parking lot and went into the tree line with the rest stop being the only thing on the very short on off ramps and the other closest civilization being five miles by interstate i don't know where that guy was going later i realized that although the rest area main room is small there is a second entrance slash exit on the side that goes to a patio backing up into the woods. I forgot about it because I never use it. But if that guy had somehow managed to get a jump on me, he easily could have pulled me out of that door and my girlfriend wouldn't have even seen it. I don't know if that was his plan and I ruined it when I made my dash for the store. But regardless, old man creeping in the rest stop bathroom in the wee hours? Let's not meet again. Hello watchers and listeners, thank you so much for watching. Well, happy new year everyone. I thought I'd end the year with some toilet stories to flush away 2023. And I'm lucky enough to have had some friends who had some stories on hand that they could send in to help me out with this one. Thanks to all that joined me in this one on such short notice. It was a spur of the moment decision, but I'm glad I did it. If you have a story to share, please send it to my email in the description below. This channel is mostly made up of stories sent by viewers or people they know. Another way to support the channel is to sign up for my Patreon where you can watch my videos ad free. More perks will be added in the new year. Also, I will be adding new designs to the merch store in the new year so keep an eye out for that thank you all for your continuous support and have a safe and happy new year and remember papa loves you <laughs>